This video is designed for the in-motion Savage UTV case for your Starlink high performance flat dish. We're going to go over the basic assembly and setup to get your system ready to go and then we'll get into how to deploy and stow your system using the case. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your case and inspect that all the parts are there. There should be a large plastic bag that has components shown here as part A and part B as well as a small bag containing two bolts, two plastic spacers, and an Allen wrench. The tools required to assemble this are simple. It's basically a 5 30 seconds Allen, which we provide, or a number four if you don't have that, and a 7 16 socket with a driver. You find part A, shown here, and the small plastic bag containing the two bolts, the two plastic spacers, and the Allen wrench. Insert those bolts into the countersunk side of the skinny aluminum piece shown as part A. Then insert those bolts into the female threaded opening of the dish as shown below. If the dish cord opening is on your right side with the dish facing down, the two female holes will be the ones that are closest to you. Use the 532nd Allen tool that is included with your case and tighten those bolts down snug. Now you're going to remove part B from the bag, which is the one with the small black triangle on the top. Place the aluminum on the dish over the remaining two female threaded holes with the triangle facing up. Tighten down the aluminum using the two bolts with the rubber bumpers around them and the 532nd Allen tool. Congratulations, that was it. You're now ready to deploy and stow your dish using the Savage in Motion case and your dish fully assembled should look a little bit like this. Now we're going to go over loading your power unit and router onto the removable platform that is in your case. The necessary hardware is already included and installed on the removable platform located in the bottom of your case. Simply remove the platform by unscrewing the two black knobs on the bottom left side of the case. Once the platform is out, you'll unscrew the two left furthest bolts using the 532nd Allen and a 7 16 socket. Mount your power supply base furthest to the left. Next, remove the two bolts in the center of the platform and mount your router base here. Tighten all four bolts down snug. Attach the cords to the power unit and the router, then place both units into their bases. Velcro any excess cable using the Velcro loops included with your case. Now you can place the platform with all components back inside the case and screw down the knobs. If you're going to be using this with 110 AC or residential or generator power, you're going to want to take the power cords coming from your power unit and router and hook them into the two black electrical outlet cables attached to the external port at the back right corner of your case. For 12 volt use, you're going to take the power cables from your base and your router and connect them to the top of the inverter. The external 12 volt DC port is ready to be screwed onto the inverter. Remove the red and black knobs on the inverter and attach the red wire to the red side. Next attach the black wire to the black side and make sure to secure the red and black plastic nuts securely. An external connection must be made to a power supply and a ground prior to use. You will find a 12 volt DC port connection in your case. This port connection will need to be wired to the vehicle's power source and an appropriate ground. We didn't include a full wire harness with your case because the length and the gauge of your wire is going to depend on your exact installation. Please reference our attached recommended wiring guide shown here to ensure correct wiring has been connected to the power supply and ground. If your dish cable is still coiled up the way it was sent to you from Starlink, the good news is you don't have to do anything. If you've already stretched out your dish cord, you just need to coil it up to about the same size as when they shipped it to you. Place the coiled dish cable into the open cutout on the foam wall closest to you and use the Velcro strap coming out of the foam to secure the dish cord. You may also use this Velcro strap to secure the 12 volt or 110 AC wires while you're not using them. We strongly encourage you to use professional installation for your 12 volt DC wires that are coming from your case to the vehicle. This will ensure safe and proper installation. Failure to wire the 12 volt DC correctly could result in electrical system damage, electrical component failure, shorts, fire, injury, or death. 
you should be able to contact your local vehicle electrical installation expert to help you out with finding the proper ground and power supply for your vehicle. Let's go over stowing your dish. Make sure all cables and components are clear of the angled foam that the dish will rest on. Slide the dish face up on the foam pieces attached to the walls. The dish should be stowed with the flat surface facing towards you and you should not be able to see any of the aluminum mounting brackets that you mounted on the back of the dish. Close the lid to secure the dish and reduce any movement during transport. To deploy your dish, you're going to grab the dish and remove it from the case and set it aside. Unvelcro about 16 inches of dish cord and push the cord through the large middle port on the right side of the case. Grab the dish and let it rest on the lid of the case with the dish cable opening to your right. Align the metal triangle attached to the bottom of the dish to the metal receiver attached to the top of the lid. Slowly slide the dish away from you looking to verify that the dish clicks and locks into the receiver. The small red tab will be sticking out about a half an inch when the dish has become locked in place. To verify the dish is locked in place, pull the dish towards yourself several times. If the dish moves at all, you need to realign the metal triangle with the receiver and press firmly together again. The dish should have no movement once it is locked into place. Connect the dish cable to the dish cable opening of the dish. Take the rubber plug with the hole in the center and slide the plug completely around the cable. Now slide the rubber plug with the small side towards the case and press firmly against the plug in several different spots, working the rubber into the port opening. The plug should completely close any gaps or small spaces that would allow moisture or debris into the case. The InMotion case was designed to be used with the dish on top and all of the ports on the side of the case facing towards the rear of the vehicle. This will reduce the chance of high winds blowing moisture or debris into any small openings in the ports. Whether you are securing the case to a rack, in a truck bed, or on a rooftop, make sure to secure the case with at least two points of contact. This will reduce any movement from high winds or vibration. We recommend routinely checking on the case to make sure that it has not shifted or loosened from your desired mounting location while in transit. Setting up your GoV thermal sensor. Go to the app on your app store of any smart device and download the GoV Home app and follow the instructions. Starlink recommends not allowing your system to operate outside of 22 degrees Fahrenheit or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to personally thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video and for your interest in our products. If you have any questions about the InMotion Starlink case or any other Savage cases, feel free to reach out to us through Instagram or Facebook at Savage UTV or at SavageUTV.com or emailing us at SavageUTV at gmail.com.